All right. This is everything except the sheet of wood, which is in the house. I'm using press board. Uh, seems kind of flimsy, but I'll be honest with you, really not that big a deal. Because, as I mentioned, uh, it's going to stay indoors, and uh, it's going to be painted. Um, so, uh, yeah, there we go. Got some caulk and uh, all the little electrical components and the baseboard and the heater and the uh, angle aluminum pieces here. Four of them, three feet, so that's how tall the machine will be. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to finish up my uh, designs and all that and get her all together. It's going to be really cool. Uh, I will, uh, ooh, the other part of that machine, the other part of that machine is, of course, that um, I'll have to make, they're called bucks, and they're the forms that you actually vacuum form the part to. Uh, there's a couple methods. I think initially, I'm going to try uh, some thick uh, foam uh, that I've got, and uh, I'm going to carve the basic shape out of two or three pieces glued together, carve the basic shape, okay, get it looking pretty good, and then sand it smooth and cover it in either uh, a slurry of plaster or um, just drywall compound, uh, cover the whole dealio, and then, um, I don't know, I think that'll work pretty well for a uh, reusable buck. I took and I pulled the steel. I took and I pulled the steel ring out of the lip of this. I drew a grid on the back and I flattened out the rim. Now I'm going to trim these nice and pretty. Put a bead of caulk around it and seat it on the box that will be the vacuum box. So that's that's what's happening with that. Now I gotta punch those holes and drill them out. That's gonna be fun. I'm gonna throw this in my scrap. I might make something out of it one day. Who knows? Okay. Now the original plans that I started with that that I, that I saw on the internet called for making a grid one inch. Okay, one inch grid with a hole at every point at every point of the grid that was an eighth of an inch. Um, I decided to go with half inch holes, so I took that down to 5 sixty-fourths I'm real bit. Be able to tell. This is rather labor intensive. I've marked a grid of um, a grid onto the pan that will be the base. Uh, and then I'm having to go along and punch a divot for each of the 642, I believe, holes that I have to drill. The reason I'll punch all the way through is because it would deform the aluminum. So I'm going to lightly punch a divot into every hole and then get the drill out and drill through every single freaking hole. Neither one of these processes is taking a particularly long time. It's just that it's very labor intensive, you know. Walking along it, tap, 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 tap. I'm having to do it on a brick because the shelf, the lip here on my anvil, isn't high enough. I have a really crappy anvil, by the way. Um, yeah, it's better than not having an anvil, but just barely. So, <laughs> um, so there you go. That's that's what I'm working on for now. All right. This is the first part that I made. Finished. It's the uh, frame that holds the plastic. Now. It's two window screen kits. Now, I didn't use the spline, and uh, I used the plastic corner pieces, and this is the actual screen rail. Uh, I got big two-inch binder clips. I actually need four more of them. I, I gotta head to the store soon. Um, but uh, this is the frame you, you take and you cut your sheet of plastic to this size, the size of the outside of this frame. Uh, lay a frame down, put the plastic down, put a frame down, clamp it all in place. Then you'll be able to put it in the machine and it'll actually sit up like this and then there'll be another clamp that'll lock it in place. And then as soon as it starts to get wavery, well I'll show you all that. But here's the first part of the frame. 
Yeah, check this out. Uh, I've actually got the. Uh, this is the board. This is the the, the panel. You see, this is going to be the the bottom. This is the side with the two switches for the power for the for the uh, power in for the shop back, and then this one is going to be for the uh, the switch is going to control the heater. This is going to be the plug in the actual plug that's going to hook to the shop vac. This is where the shop vac is going to come. This is the inlet for the shop vac. I'm going to use PVC to just frame in a little pump housing. It's going to go right there. And then this is the back, the far side. And this is the back. Uh, this is scrap. Uh, and this is scrap. And that is scrap. And I'm going to use those scrap pieces to bolster the sides of the heater element so that it's the right width. Because it's a little... A little shy of being as wide as this pip, this panel. So that that'll that'll work out nicely. Okay, after three, maybe four days of uh, digging and tilling and leveling and turning and and shaping and moving the dirt around, uh, I'm finally back to the vacuum former. Uh, I'm cutting out the boards for the main box right now. Uh, the platen is almost done, and uh, I got the frame that holds the plastic sheets together. Ooh, check this out. I modified the original design for this. It's some PVC, it's some PVC, and it's, uh, as you can see, it's welded together here with the, uh, this stuff here. And the point of this is to change the orientation of the vacuum hose inlet from plugging directly into the bottom of the machine to plugging into the side which for me personally is much handier so I don't have to lift the dang machine up to plug the vacuum hose in and I don't have to buy another vacuum hose um, I had a lot of this stuff laying around because I build a lot of potato guns and and uh, you know pneumatic systems <laughs> but uh so that's that's nice little, this neat, neat little trumpet doohickey is going to be the vacuum hose. Uh, I've cut the pieces out. I've drilled the holes in the two that need holes. I'm about to cut out the uh, outlet holes for the other ones um, on the scroll saw, and then it'll be time to put this thing together. Go. So I'm gonna start with the pieces. We have the top. We have the side. We have the back, which will mount like that. So, yeah, like that. We have the front. It goes like this. We will have the two switches on it here. And then we have the other side, which goes like that. And, um, yeah, nifty little box. Top will, of course, come out. The four sides will be put together, the top will be put back on. I just about finished the box. Well, the main portion of the box is done. Holes are cut and drilled. I'm wiring up all the circuitry right now. Uh, I have the pipe inside. Hook out the far end. I have the outlet for the vacuum. The two switches. This one will control the heat. And this one, the vacuum. It will control this outlet. So. That's handy. I've got the uprights mostly attached. I say mostly because, uh, if you'll note, I've got hole, holes marked for four and only two screws in each one. That was a lack of forethought on my part. I only bought ten screws. Apparently, they only came in packs of five. I could have got a larger box, but I didn't know I'd need twenty. So, and the next small box was fifty, so... Go figure. I'll just buy some more packs, so, so it'll be fine. Plus, I need screws to mount the platen down, which I've been working on here. Um, I'm going to have about half these holes drilled tonight. And then uh, I'll get it sanded and smoothed and get it ready to be placed on. And then that should be what I'll be able to do um, Tuesday.